What's up guys? We're back talking Parker Boats again. And uh, if you didn't know, back in 2019, uh, Correct Craft actually purchased uh, Parker Boat Brand from Linwood and Trudy. Finally gave them uh, a chance to retire. They've been uh, running the same company as a family owned business since pretty much the inception. If you didn't know, Correct Craft owns multiple brands, including wakeboard boats, bass board boats, and other marine groups. This will give us a chance to spread those experiences among Parker Boats. And uh, now we got a chance to maybe get some changes. And uh, we've compiled a list of changes uh, as, as, as a fan of Parker Boats, not, not harsh criticism, so to speak, but uh, of things that, you know, maybe some guys on the West Coast want. And, uh, you know, we would also like your input as a viewer. Uh, feel free to drop us a comment. Uh, maybe something that we didn't think of that really interests you or, or a small change or a big change. That, that you're looking forward to. And uh, hopefully we can get Parker's attention and let them know what, what customers really want in boats. And uh, at the end of the day, hopefully we'll, we'll all get a better boat. So let's start with uh, the big changes and then we'll, uh, we'll roll into some of the smaller ones that are, that are pretty easy, pretty easy to, uh, to target. All right, so we're gonna start off here with uh, model changes or model change suggestions. Uh, first and foremost, we'll start with the, the 2120 Sport Cabin. Uh, this is the only uh, pilot house model that does not have a outboard bracket. And you can kind of tell in, in this picture here, but the boat actually rides bow high, uh, actually really high. It, it can be difficult to see over the top sometimes. Uh, I'm six foot and I've ridden in 2120 plenty of times. And I can tell you that there's definitely a lot more bow lift than compared to uh, a 2320. And if you look at the, the back layout on the deck here, what you actually have is you have uh, two chairs, one uh, one's battery storage, you have a second battery back here as well, as well as your live oil pumps. And then there is a small live oil underneath the seat. What I would recommend doing is actually making an outboard bracket, fitting a nice transom uh, live oil in the center, and then you can still retain these two seats with the battery storage. And uh, that way you'll, you'll open up this deck a lot more. Uh, I always like to refer to these boats as, you know, you can only fish as many people as you are comfortable in the cabin. You know, the whole point of, of getting a pilot house is to be able to get out of the elements. And, you know, when you're going for the long ride home, um, you know, you can fit two, two people on this bench uh, that's on, you know, on the left side uh, of the helm here. But, uh, you know, this side, especially when, uh, you know, you're on plane that bows high, this is not a very comfortable place to sit, um, especially you're not, you're not facing forward and uh, you're getting munched up against this wall or whoever else is in there next to you. So really, I, I think the Parker 2120 is really capable of, of you know fishing three guys. Um, and that's about as much room as there is on the deck as well. Um, but I think if you, uh, if you change the boat and made an outboard bracket and uh, you'd open up that deck space a little bit more, you know, it'd be probably a, a little bit more comfortable as well. Let's get into the 2320, probably the most popular uh, Parker model when it comes to the sport cabins. So if you didn't know, the 2320 has the exact same cabin as the 2120. So the uh, you know the bench seat uh, is nearly identical, the helm is identical. Um, so you're pretty much used to what that is already. Now there is some pretty good deck space here, um, but again, that bench seat is uh, it's kind of a killer. So uh, the first thing I want to point out here is that there is a lot of space underneath here, and I don't know what occupies this space. I, I've never cut into this part of the hole or uh, had a way to look in there, but uh, I'm not sure what space is in there. So if you had, uh, you know, maybe made this a captain's chair moving forward, and then maybe a chair facing this way on the back half. And then you could utilize maybe the space for storage as well. Might be pretty helpful to those guys. There isn't a ton of storage on this boat. So uh, maybe something to think about. As far as power, space, outboard bracket, you know, this boat has, has all of that. Um, I'd say the biggest problem on this boat is going to be this rear bench seat. And the reason is that this is your access here to the bilge. And when this seat is folded up, you can only lift this hatch about uh, 45 degrees or so, uh, depending on what model you have and whether you have this optional chair or not. If you don't have this chair, you can open the hatch up, no problem, all the way open and really peek your head in there. 
But, uh, you know, if you're taking on water or, you know, you want to check your bilge pump, you know, this is a pretty important place to get to. And this is also where your battery storage is on the 2320. The next thing I want to talk about is this live well. Although I'm glad to see they finally got a decent live well in the corner here. It's got, it holds some gallons, uh, but it still uses a drain tube uh, for, for a drain, uh, which is pretty annoying when you're trying to keep the health, healthy uh, baits alive. 2520, pretty rad boat. Um, I do like the layout of the cabin in this boat much more than the 23 or the 21. You've got Captain's Helm chair here, and there's space for seating behind it. And then on the opposing side here, if I can pull up a picture, you can go with this bench seat, or there is an optional forward facing seat and a chair behind it. I don't know if we get a chance to see it in this picture here. Um, but you can definitely switch this configuration around to have a uh, forward facing chair here and then a, uh, a chair facing uh, sideways here as well, which is a much better configuration and you can fit four people inside the cabin. And I wouldn't be opposed to on the 2320 just extending the cabin just a little bit just to have seating for four inside it. I think that would make a world of a difference to uh, the people inside uh, for those long, cool runs uh, or rough rides home, depending on, on the day. Now, they do make this model in an extended cabin version, and it's pretty sweet, and it's also pretty popular. Um, they stopped making it in the 2820. Now, they do make the 2530 extended cabin version, which also gives you a little bit more room inside, and this is more of your uh, you know, dining setup with a sink, uh, a stove, a table, you know, all those extra little amenities that you want for uh, weekend stays on the boat. If that's what you're looking for, this is a pretty sweet cabin setup. Uh, but unfortunately, they don't offer this for the 2820. Now, the 2820 is the biggest pilot house model. Uh, and as you can tell, it definitely has a large deck. It's got ample ample room for, for people on back. Um, but as you can see in this photo, you know, the pilot house is all the way forward. Um, so when you're riding, you know, you're going to get bounced around a lot being that far forward in the boat. Wouldn't be a terrible idea to, uh, push the pilot house back or extend it like the 25 or like the 2530, make an extended pilot house version. Um, I think that would be a really good option for, for this boat and, uh, maybe create a little bit smoother ride for the driver as well. Um, but there's still pretty good space in this, just like the 2520 on the inside with the seating configuration. Uh, again, side chair facing forward with that uh, back seat facing sideways. And then you got the same configuration over here on the uh, captain's side as well. So pretty good seating for four. Huge deck. So, I mean, this deck will fish six people. But, again, cabin space is only good for four. Um, so if they would bring back the 2830, that might be a really good choice for uh, future Parker owners. Parker is still making their boats the old-fashioned way. They're still using wood in their stringers and transoms. Although this method has been trusted for years, most manufacturers have moved away from it to other materials to prevent wood rot. Other products that are available, such as Kusa board, eliminate the weight of wood and the potential of rot, making the boats stronger and lighter. Parker is still also applying the fiberglass the old-fashioned way by laying out the mat, painting the resin on, and then hand rolling it all out. The problem with this method is that you have to use an extensive amount of resin you have to hand roll out all the bubbles and it's very labor intensive and makes the boat a lot more heavier and inefficient. New modern day technologies have allowed us to build boats a lot more efficiently. The process being shown right here is called resin injection. The fiberglass matting is cut into pieces, laid out and glued onto the deck, covered in plastic and then pulled into a vacuum. The resin of the fiberglass is then pulled by vacuum through the fiberglass materials uh, over a time period and it actually impregnates the resin into the fiberglass. This eliminates bubbles, reduces the amount of resin needed to correctly apply it to the fiberglass, and makes the boat a lot more lighter and efficient. Another new modern technology I would love to see added to Parker is the use of step holes. I found a really great video from BoatTest.com showing a good example underwater of how a step hole works. So at slow speeds, you can tell that this boat is acting just like a regular hole. It has complete contact with the water surface, and there's no pockets of air anywhere. Now here at plain speed, you can see that 
The step has created a pocket of air between the back half of the boat. This allows the back of the boat to have less drag in the water, which helps fuel economy and efficiency. Now this boat only has one step in its hole. Can you imagine a longer boat that has two or three steps? When a good day is two miles per gallon, I'll take all the benefits I can get. And last, we saved some of our smaller, more achievable uh, changes that we think would be easy to make on the boats without having to do any dramatic design changes. And uh, let's get into those. So the first small change we like to recommend is removing the pulpit. Now to some, this may seem in insignificant, but for those that park their boat in a slip, that extra two feet uh, ends up costing about $40 more per month. Now, what we'd like to recommend is moving the, the anchor into the bow of the boat, like some other manufacturers, and put the windlass below deck. This will allow a lot more walking space up top and uh, a lot more modern finish. This change will also eliminate the number of bow rails that need to be made for each model and will help speed up production. The next change I like to see is uh, changing this barn door and replacing it with a sliding door. Now, this is an example of an aluminum one, but you get the idea. We can make a nice uh, door that slides with inside the helm, and uh, this will help free up deck space and uh, get rid of all that extra hardware that we have on the outside that tends to bang around. And uh, overall, it'll just look a lot more nicer. Next item on the list is reconfiguration of the windows. I would love to have viewing out of the cabin just like this boat. That's exactly what I'm looking for. This is the current bait tank uh, Parker is using. And unfortunately, it still uses a drain tube, which uh, ends up doing a lot of harm to your baits. And here on the West Coast, you know, bait, bait uh, quality is really, really important. Now, this uh, bait tank here is a pressurized bait tank. And what that does, is it allows the water level to go all the way up to the brim of the lid and prevents the water from sloshing. It also keeps your baits alive. Now, currently, the one in the corner is probably a little bit too small. I'd really like to see a second one on the West Coast. We really like to keep you know, one tank for squid and one tank for fit bait, um, 45 gallons being the minimum and uh, 60 gallons being optimum. And as you can tell from this photo, guys on the West Coast are not scared to put a giant bait tank in the middle of the deck to make up for that room that we're lacking in live wells. We really love to clean up the interior also, with the addition of some large screens at the helm, change out those old rocker switches for the new blue seas buttons that are pretty fancy, and uh, upgrade the stereo, finally get rid of those little tiny 4 inch speakers that we got up in, in the ceiling. But uh, biggest complaint overall I hear is about the monkey carpet, and uh, you know if we could really increase the finishes on the inside of the boat to make it as nice as the outside, I think that would go a long ways. The last item on the list today is the tuna door or the diver door and uh, I like to move that to the side of the boat and that'll help me uh, free up that space for that second bait tank that I was talking about. But we can still incorporate a really nice diver's ladder and make it easy and accessible for people at the sandbar and uh, it's a lot easier to rodeo fish from the side of the boat versus the back of the boat. Thanks for watching today guys. If you have a comment or suggestion for Parker, please make sure that you leave it in the comments. We'd love to see some of these new changes go into the next generation of Parker boats and only make their owners a lot more happier. If you like what you saw today, you can subscribe to our channel or follow us along on Instagram and Facebook. And always remember, share the stoke.